But time to get in the technical analyst now. Manav Chopra, head of equity research at India Bull Ventures, joins us on the show. Good afternoon, Manav. Thanks for joining us on the show today. Uh, firstly, uh, what are you? It's a new series. Uh, uh, the July month will start, start from Monday. Uh, what are you recommending clients? What's your reading of uh, the Nifty and the Bank Nifty charts? See, uh, the markets have been quite range bound. You know, in spite of the breakdown that we observed uh, yesterday, you know, the, there is a complete. Uh, I, I would say at lower levels, you know, there has been a very good buying, and which has led to rejection at lower levels. So. Um, uh, how we interpret is that as long as uh, Nifty now uh, sees a close above 10,670 uh, uh, levels, you know you could see this uh, short covering to uh, you know take the markets higher. Uh, the broader or the near term range for the Nifty would be 10,600 on the lower side and 10,750 resistance on the upside. Um, I sense that you know uh, in spite of that breakdown that happened yesterday and uh, close. Above, most importantly, the weekly closing uh, is something that we'll be eyeing in. Um, the last week uh, low for the uh, Nifty was close to 10,700. If we inch higher and maybe close above 10,700, I think uh, next week could be interesting. And you know, you could see this uh, follow-on move on the upside. For Bank Nifty, I sense this uh, range to continue. Uh, like mentioned last week, you know, 26,200 is the lower support range, and on the upside. 26,700 is the broader range, but on the immediate basis, the resistance would be at 26,500. So, in case if we see a break above 26,500, is only when uh, one can expect some sort of a positive bias. Uh, I think going forward, uh, the private banks could uh, take an important initiative, and uh, from the uh, PSU space, I think SBI would be one stock that one can eye into. So, in case if SBI starts forming a formation and sees a move above 264, I think Bank Nifty could sense some sort of a positive trigger on the upside. Okay, that's the view on Bank Nifty, which has been underperforming the Nifty and the other broader markets in today's session. But let's also bring in Sarvendra Shrivastav, independent market expert uh, who joins us on the show. Now, hi, Sarvendra, good afternoon, and thanks a lot for joining us today. Well, the view hasn't changed for the last few weeks or months, I would call it. You still have a positional sell call on Nifty. Yeah, hi, very good afternoon. <clears throat> no, you got it right, absolutely. I think <clears throat> we are, uh, we, we, we kind of pride in the fact that we have always been macro technical guys and we stick to what we, we stick to our guns. Uh, from the time we called a bear market uh, in November, December uh, 17 and which we reiterated in Jan of this year as well, uh, I think the bear market is definitely there. The only thing is that only 10 to 12 stocks in the Nifty <clears throat> have not fallen and that is why Nifty is not showing you the true picture. But you go and look at the internals of the market, uh, it's already a quasi bear market. Stocks are down 50, 60, 70 percent uh, retracement levels from the respective highs. So, and, and that's almost a 50 percent universe, which is more than 40 percent retracement or more <clears throat> in this fall. So, in that sense, I think uh, for me, the tricky issue is that will Nifty correct or not? But my answer is that such kind of underperformance when it's already come in the mid cap, small cap space, Nifty then does not have the ammunition. To, to fathom a fresh breakout. So, uh, the chances of a fresh breakout, if at all, 100, 200 points possible, but I think that the, the probability is very, very low. So, I would still stick and as I would say that I still believe that the Nifty is falling much lower. This is a even year and even years you fall minimum 25, 30% from the high. So, in that sense, we have not gone nowhere as far as the Nifty is concerned. So, immediate targets, if I have to put positional, I would maintain 10, 400 as my target, even though I believe that 9,700 and sub 9700 levels will come this year but for the time being sticking to a 15 20 day time frame 10 400 is what i would recommend as a target that is what i have recommended as a call earlier as well so that call is open that call is live we gave that call at uh, 10770 uh, so but still i think 10700 also i would take that trade uh, the stop loss remains the same 10931.60 on a closing basis so that needs to be kept in mind a positional sell on nifty and these are spot levels Okay, uh, Manav, stock specific, uh, which are the stocks that you're recommending for today? See, at the current levels, you know, uh, uh, my both the recommendations are on the buy side. Uh, my first call is buy on Colgate Palmolive. Uh, the stock overall has been in a very good uptrend and you know a uh, few months back we did see the stock rally uh, you know see a very good rally from its lows of 1000 towards the levels of 1300 and now the stock has corrected and seen a good uh, corrective decline um, and is also forming a support near the levels of 1150. 
uh, I, I sense from the current levels there is a good risk reward ratio and uh, uh, going forward you know uh, where the markets could be uh, range bound to slightly uh, you know, uh, you will see some sort of selling pressure. I think the defensive stocks like coal pile could see some sort of uh, momentum and also the stock since it has declined near its key support area, I think the margin of safety is playing quite well. Uh, keep a stop loss at 1150 on the lower side. We expect an upside target of 1240. My other call would be a buy on escorts. So basically, uh, the stock has already seen a series of decline from its recent peak and uh, near its important support levels, uh, it has uh, seen a good bounce from its uh, deep oversold levels and also a reversal formation on the daily charts with confirmation on volume. I sense going forward, you know, this there will be some short covering that could take place in, into the stock and uh, with, with that case in mind, you know, 845 could be the stop on the lower side for an upside target of 880. Okay, Escort's doing quite well in today's session. Sarvendra, coming to you, your trading strategy in terms of individual stocks? See, we will, we will be ready to put our money where our <coughs> mouth is. And what we are saying here is that <coughs> the theme to play out for the next month or two months will be outperformance will get punished. So that's those are my words. Outperformance, wherever it has been till now, will get punished. So you will, you will see all the leading names. So I think this decline will be led by the HGFC Twins and Reliance. So if the Nifty has to fall, there's no way that anything else will drive uh, down Nifty those many points. So these three names have to fall and will fall. That's been the call <clears throat> last week as well. So last week also we shorted Reliance. We are shorting it again at a lower level. So my sense here is that the leading names will fall, all the names which have not fallen till now. So all three names today also are from the outperformance list, which have not fallen. The first one being HDFC Bank, uh, sell on HDFC Bank uh, for a target of 2051 uh, with a stop loss at 2187.60 uh, <clears throat> on an hourly closing basis. A uh, sell on Asian Paints. This is again a stock which has not fallen. A uh, sell on Asian Paints. Crude will start hurting this stock now. Uh, look to sell for a target of 1200. Anybody wanting to uh, have a slightly higher time frame, say around a month, two months, then this stock could actually fall till 1120, 1130 level as well. But for the time being, next 10 days, 1200 is the target. Stop loss for Asian Paints kept at 1306.60. Again, on an hourly closing basis. <clears throat> and last one is a reiterate sell on Reliance. So last last week we shorted it above 1000 levels, but today we are wanting to see it again at these levels in this pullback. So a sell on Reliance again, right now around 976.77, I think, for a target of 900. So we are we are kind of uh, downgrading the targets earlier 930, now 9, uh, 920, 930. Now we are saying that it will go to 900. Uh, look to short sell now again, spot levels. 1015.60. So the stop loss from the earlier 1061 has been trailed to 1001.560. So anybody holding that trade can still continue to hold reliance from the last week as well. Look for targets in the region of 900 or 920 odd levels. So all three names, all from the outperformance basket. Okay, let's get in a fundamental voice uh, on the show. Gurmeet Chadda, co founder and CEO at Complete Circle Solution Consultants, joins us on the show. Good afternoon, uh, Gurmeet. This is Darshan here. Joining me on the show is Navneet. Uh, uh, what do you make of the market currently? The Nifty has given a breakup opening today. It's up almost 100 points. Uh, uh, what's the sense that you're getting? Will this hold on or do you sense that, you know, uh, investors need to be cautious now and take these rallies to exit their positions? Uh, uh, hi, Darshan. Uh, see, the broader Nifty doesn't really reflect the, the pain in the portfolio. Uh, so there is pain across asset classes. Uh, while the Nifty has only fallen, you know, four five percent from the, from the peak, there is obviously bigger pain at a, a smaller mid cap level. We were the other day discussing that one out of every three stocks is uh, is approximately at a 52 week low. Uh, the bonds have taken an MTM hit. So I think I think the markets will be in a range for some time. Uh, I think the, the uh, there are global factors, there are domestic factors. And uh, this, I reiterate that this is a good time for, uh, you know, picking up stocks, uh, being disciplined and, uh, you know, revisiting the old lessons, uh, you know, uh, stay where the earnings are, uh, stay where uh, there is visibility in terms of volume growth, visibility in terms of GST making an impact in uh, formalization of economy. And you have to look at, even look at the emerging market MSCI, uh, you know, index. It's fallen uh, almost 10 percent. And China has fallen despite Class A shares being added. So it's it's a broader EM pain, and you know exaggerated in India more by uh, some domestic factors. So range bound uh, for now, but good time for stock picking from a two month kind of a perspective. 
A two month perspective stock picking you, you spoke about you know stay with companies which you, you are seeing earnings visibility uh, let's get some names out you know what are you what are you referring to which are these stocks uh, that you know someone if is looking at a two month perspective which are these stocks so uh, so one i think is the auto pack uh, i think uh, you know if you see the auto numbers whether those are two wheelers are growing in uh, you know early double digit uh, passenger cars i think this year would clock 18 to 20 percent series are growing uh, uh, at a very healthy rate so one name which comes to the mind is is maruti which is a leader in the passenger car uh, space almost 50 percent market share if you see maruti their uh, their product mix uh, you know was 81 percent of the revenues in 2010 used to come from hatchbacks now that's come down to almost 62 63 uh, percent uh, there's a waiting period for most of the you know models which includes baleno brezza uh, desire uh, they have about 1800 dealers which are some total of hyundai uh, tata toyota uh, mahindra put together uh, you know we are seeing some reduction in uh, royalty payment as well uh, they are co developing some of the models especially brezza uh, so i think it's 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 it's, it's a good play uh, uh, there will be some uh, margin levers also uh, like uh, uh, you know as i said they are working their phase one plant has already started producing 20000 units so maruti is one of the name the other thing which comes to mind is the affordable housing space the the hfcs okay what in the affordable housing space could me that you like so i you know uh, uh, group finance uh, despite uh, being at a multiple it is uh, you know uh, uh, is a very very good buy if you see uh, you know the dispersal uh, of home loans a uh, 40% by number and 20% by value are happening under the government scheme which is the pradhan mantri awas yojana and the effective rate uh, home loan rate there is at about uh, you know 5 and 1/2% uh, you know uh, uh, if you incorporate the subsidy also if you look at grow finance their uh, their operating cost to assets which is an important ratio uh, is just below 1% uh, the uh, the asset quality is very very healthy uh, last quarter also there was almost a 20% growth in dispersals so uh, very very steady and overall in india if you see uh, you know the mortgage to gdp Uh, you know our ratio is around 10% the penetration any developed market uh, uh, is around 50% so there is a long long way to go there uh, uh, both in terms of the expansion of the pie okay so those are two picks coming in from uh, gurmeet one is on maruti and the other is on groove finance just want to highlight uh, some of the pockets which are doing well i think the hotel stocks have gone up in trade so pull up royal orchid that's seen gains and also something like e- that's up 8.5% eih eih associated and also oriental hotel the entire basket ta gvk most of them are seeing substantial gains and they all are sitting at days high level that's eih eih associated also sitting not a very liquid counter but still sitting with gains of nearly uh, 5 to 6% oriental is up 18% just a few points away from being locked in upper circuit of almost 20% gurmeet any thoughts on um, the hotel pack we uh, randomly see these stocks going up then the rally fizzles out and the news is that the occupancy rates for the hotel segment has been going up and we've received some positive commentary especially from the management of royal orchid but anything in this space that you guys like yeah uh, we uh, we track couple of them lemon uh, lemon tree hotels look good it's it's in the mid segment in uh, you know, the occupancy levels uh, we've been tracking as i uh, you know we discussed that from after 2008 9 the first time the the occupancy levels are touching 70% uh, also there is a uh, uh, you know broader uptake uh, uh, and and the average tariffs have also gone up so i think both put together should give uh, but hotels as i said uh, uh, should be uh, uh, you know more it, it is very very seasonal so one has to be very uh, you know careful in terms of uh, how you build your position in and 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 do that uh, typically uh, post so this quarter would be good because there's a peak summer season lot of travels uh, the next quarter is a is a little lean so it's a very cyclical business and one has to build uh, you know positions accordingly Okay, one stock which has managed to buck the trend uh, is Titan. It's at the high, days high. It's up almost uh, more than four percent currently. It's trending up. Let's pull up Titan four and a half percent up move. Gurmeet, uh, Titan uh, news aside of what happened with Rakesh Junjunwala, Titan has corrected almost uh, anywhere between ten to fifteen percent from the recent highs. Uh, will Titan make a good uh, investment bet for someone? Yes, I think I think it's it's one of the fundamental stocks to own for the long run. And, and mind you, he's only sold 1.4 percent. 
uh, you know, uh, Mr. Rakesh Jundunwala. So it's, it's not that he's exited title. And, uh, uh, you know, it's one of the uh, jewelry is another player where there's a big GST impact. Uh, you know, uh, there is a lot of formalization uh, happening, uh, you know, uh, in, in this space. And I think uh, Titan is the best uh, to, to capture that. Okay, and the valuations do not uh, um, uh, deter the fact that one should still hold on to a stock like Titan Gurmeet? Yeah, I, I, you know, uh, Navi, see, honestly, uh, what has happened in this market is that, you know, there is this value trap. So you can't buy stocks which are even follow, fallen 50%, uh, you know, especially like Ava Karanji or a Videocon uh, or some of the others. And there are stocks which, which, which continue to command, uh, command a premium. So this market is priced to perfection. And as long as, you know, you, you deliver uh, a solid earnings growth uh, and there is good corporate governance, you know, this is becoming very, very important, uh, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to valuing whether those are HDFC twins or whether those are some of the tire names or, you know, we can, the Bajaj pack. So what we are seeing is that there's a premium to performance. There's a premium to corporate governance. And I think this will continue. Uh, so we are, there's a, a lot of it is housed under renovation. Till the time we really clear a lot of these issues, this premium to uh, some of the good names will continue. Okay, Cipla has moved to the highest point of the day. It's up almost 2.5%. It's trading much higher. Uh, it's at the day's high. Could we have any view on uh, the pharma pack? Do you like Cipla or any of the other pharma stocks? Yeah, I, I, I like the uh, the cramps uh, space, uh, uh, Darshan. I, I, you know, India, they are, so DB Labs is one which comes to mind. Con cramps is basically contract research and contract manufacturing. Uh, we are seeing some very smart tie-ups happening uh, in the value chain uh, 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 with some of the leading multinationals of, of some of the Indian companies. So that looks pretty, pretty good. I think diagnostics uh, also as a as a, as a vertical is looking very, very good. Uh, this market is hugely unorganized. If you go to tier two, tier three towns, uh, you know, uh, you do not have any formal players. Uh, the market is probably, you know, there are various estimates, but some say it's more than 75% uh, unorganized. So I think diagnostics, especially Dr. Lal and Thyrocare look uh, look good place. So cramps and diagnostics to me would be, I would stay away from generics for some more time because that would be very, very news driven. Uh, you know, some plant getting clearance from FDA and, and there will be spots. So broader pharma, uh, you know, uh, I would stay away, but maybe look at cramps and diagnostics as a as a sub vertical. Okay. Some of the other metal counters are doing well. Tata Steel is doing well. Vedanta has moved to the highest point of the day. Uh, Sarvendra, any view on uh, these metal stocks, so Vedanta or Tata Steel? Uh, should someone, if someone is looking to take a position, should it be on the long side? <laughs> See, I think the metal space can be a trading long, if at all. Uh, beyond that, I think still the sector now uh, stays below its medium term and long term averages. So Tata Steel has broken both both its medium term as well as long term supports as well as key averages as well. So till you trade below that, so which is roughly placed at around 600. So I would say as long as you stay below the psychological 600 mark for Tata Steel, this can be a trading play. So the, yes, a 15 to 20 point trading play is possible from here. So anybody wanting uh, to take that trade. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, the trade is there. So, so you could look at some something like uh, 580 to 585 on Tata Steel on the spot. So, if you're wanting to do that, then you keep a seven to eight point stop loss and you can look at a long trade. So, that's the only stock that probably I would say that I want to play for a trading bounce. Vedanta, I think, uh, is a weaker of the space and weaker of the lot. So, I would I would try and avoid it, uh, because this could give you uh, ugly surprises and you could end up losing some money here because uh, for me uh, decisively the metal space the longer term trend is down so purely a trading play that to tata steel okay so one can look to expect a trading bounce is what sarvendra is suggesting even jindal steel and power remember that's the top gainer on the nifty metals index which has seen gains of nearly three percent in today's session so jspl also sitting with gains of nearly six percent um the other stocks which have gone up is uh, gale i think that's your top gainer on nifty and also petronet lng both these stocks have seen good gains gale uh, slightly off today's high, sitting with gains of almost 5%. Petronet LNG, that's also in the futures and options market. That's also seen gains of nearly 5 to 5.5%. Manav, on the charts, if one were to take a bet on any of these stocks, how is it looking? See, at the current levels, I think uh, uh, if you look at the chart of Gale, you know, the stock overall has been in a range bound since past three to four weeks. And uh, so there is no clear trade in, at the current levels. What 
we can conclude as you know the, the support of 310 looks good and you know in case if it comes at lower levels one can look to initiate but looking at the chart for petronet definitely uh, uh, it it indicates a good breakout uh, which has taken place on the daily perspective and also on the weekly chart there is a very good reversal i sense that there is a very short term bottom which is forming at the current levels and 212 could be a very good stop loss to go forward so uh, one can definitely look to maintain a buy, buy into this and uh, possibly expect the levels of 230 in the next uh, couple of days Okay, uh, one other sector which is doing well is FMCG. Both ITC and HUL have moved to the highest point of the day. Gurmeet, before we let you go, a view on this FMCG sector. Most of the counters are trading near new highs. Godrej Consumer is at a new high. Uh, even counters like Bata. So, entire anything that do, has to do with consumer is doing well. Uh, anything that you like uh, from this pack, uh, it could be an ITC, it could be an HUL, it could be any stock. Uh, if someone wants to play the consumption theme, uh, what according to you should yeah. that person buy? See, uh, I think uh, there are multiples. We are saying it's a very, very broad theme, as you rightly pointed out. Uh, across, I think uh, we are seeing volume growth in FMCG, whether it is Nestle, Unilever. Uh, one, one thing I like is Britannia. I think uh, again, uh, despite valuations, uh, we are seeing the, the there's a profitable product mix now, uh, while the rest of the industry uh, derives 70% of the revenue from the lower end, uh, which is your glucose biscuit and others. Britannia derives it from uh, from cookies, which where, so 70% of the revenue for Britannia comes from high-end products, so which gives which gives it a you know an, a, a better operating margin. Uh, they have been coming up uh, using the health plank very well uh, under the Nutri Choice and uh, and other brands. Uh, uh, so so that's one play we can uh, we can look at. The other we can look at is 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 Bajaj Electricals, which again uh, uh, to me is seeing a huge surge. Uh, they have done some amazing work on distributing distribution. Uh, we are seeing a big uptick in rural demand. Uh, Med department has also said that the the, the monsoons are 15 days uh, above schedule, which is which is very very important. So uh, so maybe these two stocks you can play uh, uh, on, on the consumption side. Okay, well the consumption theme so far has been performing really well. In fact, we've also seen stock like Imami that's also surged in today's session and it's gone up on quite a, a good volume compared to yesterday's session. So five and a half percent gains for Himani, Himami on the screen. Now, Gurmeet, we'll leave it at that note. Thanks a lot for joining us today and taking us through your views on the markets. Have a good weekend. Thank well, you. that Thanks. was Gurmeet giving us top picks on Maruti and Groove Finance. And talking about the markets, we're still stable. 10,695 for Nifty. Bank Nifty is also holding about, though it is off the day's high at 26,380 for Bank Nifty. There was a blip which came in just half an hour back for that one. Okay, it's time for us uh, to slip into a short break. But before that, let's hear out Sesha Gri Rao of JSW Steel, who believes that Indian steel imports have reached worrying levels. Speaking to Menika Doshi earlier today, Rao also stressed the need to safeguard domestic players. Listen in. If any unfair competition that comes in, I think the government of India has to take the steps to, st to stop the injury to the domestic industry. Okay. Just to give you some uh, statistics, 2008 to 2014, if you see the imports into India, that, uh, that every uh, year normalized imports is around uh, six and a half to seven and a half million ton. That is the range in which imports have been happening starting from 2008 to 2014. So 2015 and 2016 are only the years there were aberrations of unfair trade. Where 2015 imports went up to 11 million ton and in 2016 it went up to 13 million ton. So when it happened, not only Indian steel industry suffered, entire global industry have suffered, which in fact showed that there was a dumping. So government of India have taken several trade remedial actions. In the meantime, uh, the global steel prices also went up. Now, if, uh, if you look at 2017 and 2018 numbers of uh, steel uh, imports into India, 2018 particularly, again, imports have gone up. It is 8.4 million ton. So when we compare with the normalized imports of around 6.5 to 7.5 million ton, 2008 to 2014, 2018 imports again surged to 8.4 million tons. So anything above the normalized range of 6 to 7 million ton, I think Indian industry has to worry about. Okay. And as I mentioned to you, in the current financial year, again, we are seeing an increase of 15% over 8.4 annualized basis. So that is a matter of concern. We are also seeing out of these imports of 8.4 million ton, which has happened in the last year, 51% of the imports are from FTA countries, Japan, Korea, and other Asian countries, which is 0% duty. 
So these are the areas where I think steel industry in India should be watchful and should bring to the attention of the government. Whenever there is any line item in the import side, there is a surge which is causing injury to the domestic industry. Taking into account the kind of uh, trade retaliatory measures that have been taken by various countries, there is a need uh, for us also to see that this unfair trade will not hurt the Indian domestic industry. No, I get that, sir. But you've also pointed out that demand has been better than anticipated. Is that demand not enough to be able to absorb these higher imports? For instance, what capacity utilization have you all been running at for the last couple of months? If you see the total uh, Indian uh, steel demand uh, side, we have 91 million ton of uh, consumption last year. Mm. Out of that, we exported around 9 million and also imported 8.4 million ton. So imports and exports doesn't happen. We are really balanced as regards to Indian uh, steel consumption and the production is concerned. We have 130 million ton of installed uh, capacity. Out of that, we produced crude steel of 102 million ton in the last year. If we take 85-90% capacity utilization, still there is uh, 10 million ton scope for incremental production. If our uh, demand is growing at a rate of 7-8%, uh, to 8%, that means every year we need another 7-8 to 8 million ton of steel to meet our domestic demand. That can come from the uh, unused capacities today in India. And on average, if I look at uh, Indian steel industry is operating 80%, of course, JW steel is operating above 90%. Then, in the next two years' time, there is an incremental capacity that are coming in. From JW Steel itself, we are bringing in close to 7 million ton of incremental capacity. We are 18 million ton today, so we will be 25 million ton by 31st March 2020. In addition to that, uh, where we are declared as a successful uh, bidder, uh, our pref preferred bidder for Monetis Path, if we are able to get another million ton can come into the market. So 7 plus 1, 8 million ton from our fold uh, can come in uh, from 18 million ton. Similarly, the other competition, if you look at, there are incremental capacities that are coming in in the next two years' time. So there is at least, in my view, including sales recently commissioned uh, projects, uh, where they are talking about uh, 21 million ton of installed capacity from their existing production of 14 million ton, another 6 to 7 million ton from uh, the government sector. So all this together, I don't find any issues to meet uh, the domestic demand growth that would come in, in the next two to three years' time. Uh, only worry is uh, imports. Welcome back. You're still watching Countdown with us and Bloomberg Quint. Just about 26 and a half minutes to go for markets to close. And we're at days high for Nifty at least 10,711, 122 points higher. So clearly it's turning out to be a great, great uh, day or the end to the week uh, after the June series ended on a week note yesterday. But let's also do a check quickly on the European market indices and let's see what's happening across the globe. In the uh, well, good going, FTSE is up uh, 7 tenths of a percent. CAC has seen good gains of nearly 1.3 percent and the German index DAX too also sitting with gains of nearly a percent and a half and um, I think the gains today that we're seeing is majorly being led by something like Reliance Industries, LNT, all these stocks were not doing too well in the last two sessions but LNT too seems to have bounced back in today's trade but on that note let's bring in, uh, bring in our next guest Anand Tandon, market expert who joins us on the show now. Hi Anand, good afternoon and thanks a lot for joining us today on Bloomberg Quinn. Well some respite for the markets, we've seen a bounce back after uh, you know a week closing to the June series yesterday. Um, what are you sensing? Because the broader markets, they've not uh, uh, recovered too much, so to say, the way we've seen uh, recovery coming in in the frontline indices. Do you see further pain in the broader market universe? Well, if the liquidity continues to be remaining tight, I, and I think there is a good possibility that will be the case. Uh, I don't see that uh, there will be a huge upside on the uh, smaller companies. Uh, clearly, the market is now getting more and more narrower in terms of the stocks that are holding it up. And uh, it is best that uh, one be very careful about the broader market, uh, especially those which are not the institutional stocks. Anand, uh, historically, uh, it's shown that June always comes as a time where there seems to be always a relief rally. If you take a look at the last 15 years, only thrice have there been negative uh, returns in, Ju in, in, sorry, in July. Uh, if in case that trend continues and we do have this month as a relief rally, 
uh, do you would you recommend uh, you know getting out of some positions uh, for uh, uh, you know investors should get out of some of the positions that they have well, you know, really it depends on the scenario you're painting. Let us look at the most, most important factor which is spooking the market right now, which is the trade wars. Uh, in my view, the people, uh, most analysts have not factored in uh, worsening of the, state of the trade wars, though the market seems to be moving ahead of, uh, with the assumption that it will worsen. So if, the, uh, if you assume that the uh, trade wars will lead to a further worsening uh, situation, then I think, you know, we haven't seen anything yet because the front line, which is pretty much holding up, we are hardly down 5% uh, from the top, uh, you know, is not going to be able to hold on where it is if the trade wars were to worsen because the earnings haven't yet started to come in. Uh, if, on the other hand, you believe that, you know, the trade wars will uh, kind of settle down and Mr. Trump will back off and things will be back to normal, then, you know, this is a great opportunity to be buying. So it's really the scenario you're looking at. My own case is that you know, we are getting into a, a place where egos will override other economic and logical decisions. We are not necessarily living in the world of logic, and therefore you should be prepared for a, a further worsening from here. If in case you wanted to deploy some money, which are the areas that uh, you would look at uh, as uh, safe bets uh, to ride this? Well, there are no safe bets really, but there has to be a scenario you are painting. So if you assume again, that India will generally not be in the trigger uh, hair of, uh, of the US administration, then I would look at export-oriented businesses and uh, hope that those will continue to uh, stay below the radar. Uh, the, and obviously, the big opportunities there continue to be in uh, pharma and IT, and also some of the other export uh, things like chemicals and so on, uh, some of which, especially the chemical side, has fallen off a cliff. However, there is a good possibility that if you buy the argument that the trade wars will worsen, that India's exports will also come into the uh, in, as a target. And if that were to happen, then all bets are off. So in the absence of anything, I think it is safe to assume that you can continue to be benefited by the uh, rupee weakening and uh, look at the export basket as the uh, single most, uh, uh, single largest exposure at this stage. Okay, BPCL is off the day's low. That's sitting with gains of almost 1% uh, to 2%. Uh, Colte Patel is up 18.5%. A um, couple of other stocks, Edel Buys, India Bulls Real Estate, J JSPL, all these stocks seems to have bounced back. Even Havels, let's just pull up Havels as well. That's sitting with gains of nearly 4% as we speak. Uh, Manav, on the charts, uh, do you see any sort of fresh trade that can be taken on Havels? Yeah, the current levels, you know, when we see Havels, uh, you know, the stock has been consolidating in a range, but uh, the most important support for the stock overall has been close to the levels of 530, which also coincides with its long-term averages. And most importantly, a reversal, you know, the support zone further uh, validates it. Uh, I sense with a risk-reward ratio, definitely one can take a trade uh, at the current levels and take a, a near-term view. Uh, and uh, one can also expect uh, rallies towards the upper end of the uh, channel, which is close to the levels of 570. So a stop close to 535 on the lower side for an upside target of 570 could be traded for at least for a week uh, for the near-term perspective. Uh, Manav, what about India Bulls real estate? After many days of correcting, it's managed to inch up today higher. It's up almost 6%. What should one do in India Bulls real estate? Uh, actually, I will not be able to comment on any of the uh, our, our group of companies. Okay, so Sarvendra, you know, I'll, uh, I'll have you, to take the pass. Okay, okay, understood it. Uh, Sarvendra, uh, can you share a comment on India Bulls real estate? Uh, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> See, I think uh, again uh, in the short term, I think uh, the stock looks oversold, so we are probably getting a small bounce here. But I think the overall trend here remains uh, weak and. Uh, the stock continues to trade between all uh, key uh, short term, long term, as well as the medium term support area. So I would max see a bounce here till around 170. Unless until it clears, uh, breaks and stays clear of 170 on the upside, uh, I don't see any meaningful uh, rally developing here. So purely a trading bounce if someone wants to play. Max, I think, is 168, 170 on the upside. Anand, what about uh, the PSU banking lot? Uh... What do you make of it? Most of them have corrected significantly, uh, despite of all the efforts, you know, uh, that uh, government makes to capitalize it or whatever uh, they try to do. The, the somehow, uh, PSU banks, most of them are trading at uh, record lows. Uh, what should one do when dealing with this sector? Well, I think there is some case to be made for corporate-facing banks. 
TSU banks, which are otherwise, uh, and that, that too among the large ones, the PSU banks, may, there may be a story to be said, uh, especially, for example, State Bank of India. For the rest of them, I would stay uh, you know, clear. Uh, these are zombie banks until and unless there is some dramatic change in the way they are managed. And that is unlikely so long as the government continues to be the largest shareholder. Uh, nothing is going to change. They will continue to lose market share and they will continue to extend loans which will go back. Okay, PSU banking lot, uh, some bit of respite, however, coming in in today's trading session. And uh, um, let's just address a couple of our viewer queries. I think Ravi Shankar on YouTube wanted a view on Ashok Leyland for the July series, and he wanted a view with from Sarvendra. Sarvendra, if you could address this one, uh, what sort of uh, movement do you expect for Ashok Leyland for the July series? See, I think by and large, uh, <clears throat> we've maintained that outperformance will get punished, and this was a stock which was in that basket uh, till last month, and now starting to correct. So uh, a couple of weeks back, also we carried a short trade here. Uh, uh, at that point in time, we had targets in the region around 130 because that that, that was an area where we had its long-term averages, and the stock were bouncing from that number for the last uh, six nine months. Now that that area has been broken, and decisively the long-term setups also inverting with the break of the long-term averages as well as some long-term key trend lines. Uh, my sense is that the stock should remain weak and uh, would continue to slip. And the only thing is the extent probably uh, is something that would be tricky right now because the stock is slightly oversold. So you might first get a small bounce, uh, maybe towards 130, 135, and then the stock corrects. So I would say that stock remains weak by July, and I would say that around a 4 5% negative return is possible for this month. Okay, pull up Infosys trading at record highs currently, 1308 on the cash side, it's up 1.5% and suddenly a big move has come in on Infosys. Anand, what about the IT space? Uh, most of them have moved significantly. What would your preference be, the large cap or the mid cap? Yeah. Uh, as I said, I think if you're going to get a move, it will mostly be the frontline companies. And uh, there is no particular advantage that one is now seeing that the smaller companies have. So the smaller companies could have been focused on perhaps, uh, you know, what they call digital, but that is now beginning to scale up. So I don't think that there is any great advantage. It's a question of who can get the people required. Uh, so broadly, I think IT is doing okay. And uh, I would think that you'd probably get uh, better safety and uh, equal performance by staying in the larger companies. Okay, Hexaware has also turned green. Uh, Anand, we leave it at that note. Thanks a lot for joining us today and taking us through your views on the markets. Well, that's on the IT pack. Nifty is at 10,720, so good going there. And uh, we're seeing some incremental gains coming about only for Nifty because Bank Nifty is still around those levels of 26,382. Let's move on. It's the last trading day of the second quarter in 2018, and the Indian markets have managed to reclaim crown after falling nearly 5% between the month of January to March. The same can't be said, however, about all the Nifty 500 constituents, though, with an overwhelming majority still trading with a drop of more than 20% on year-to-date basis. Yash Upadhyay, who has put up some data together, joins us with the chart of the day. Yash, over to you. Uh, well, thanks for that, uh, Navneet. So, uh, the Nifty 500 index, that has fallen by about 4% on a year-to-date basis, but there's more to it than what meets the eye. So, as you can see on the chart, 46% of the NSE 500 members, they have given returns uh, of more than 20% less, so negative, more than negative 20%, uh, while 33% of the NSE 500 members, they have fallen anywhere between 0 to minus 20%. So, that is a huge 79% of the NSE 500 universe, which has only given negative returns. And as far as the top losers are concerned, they include the likes of Vakrangi, PC Jewelers, Quality, Hindustan Construction, among others. As far as the gainers are concerned, only 19% of the stocks, or about 104 stocks, they have given positive return with the top gainers, including the likes of the IT, uh, IT pack, which includes NIT Tech, uh, Mindtree, and others. As we enter into the second half of calendar year 2018, the key question here uh, remains that is there more pain in the broader markets. That's the chart of the day. Okay. Thanks so much, Yash. And, and, and uh, Navneet, what, what he said is absolutely right. You know, most of uh, the counters in the mid-cap and small-cap space have gotten hammered. The Nifty has been managed only by, it's been controlled by four or five stocks. But 
Uh, some of them are down 50, 60, 70 percent. So that's the pain that's there in the market. Yeah, currently. in fact, stocks like Reliance, and especially the IT stock, InfiTCS, who've been outperforming yeah. so far this so year. So it's, it's basically InfiTCS, you have your Bajaj FinServs, and basically, you know, it's the HDFC twins. Yeah, yeah. They have they been have controlling the, the market. Weightage. You add in a Kotak, you add in Infosys TCS. But look at the pain in Tata Motors, look at the train in pain uh, in some of the pharma stocks, uh, look at the pain in some of the metal stocks. So that's for all to see. Well, it uh, remains to be seen. Pharma, which outperformed in the June series, can the outperformance continue for the July series or not? But in terms of individual stock, I just want to pull up Capital First. That's touched its 52-week low in today's session. Manav, any thoughts here on Capital First? It's down 2% in a strong market like today. <coughs> uh, would you take any bet on the downside here? See, at the current levels, you know, the stock uh, has been a complete underperformer and has been consecutively forming a series of lower tops and bottoms. Um, I sense, you know, this stock is uh, mainly a sell on rise kind of a, a strategy because it's still trading below its uh, even its short term averages. So it doesn't make sense even, you know, trading it for a pullback. You could just see a short term. Uh, dead cat bounce and eventually the stock uh, again uh, rallies on the lower side. On the upside, 535, 540 are the key uh, levels on the upside where in case if there's any, any pullback of another 4, 5% is probably when you look to short. Overall, the trend still remains weak. I sense in the near term perspective, the stock could also even test the levels of 490 uh, in next few weeks. Okay, a couple of stocks uh, at uh, record highs again. Britannia has moved to the highest point of the day. It's up 1.5%. It's trading at record highs. Bata has uh, moved to record highs currently. Uh, a sharp surge that's come in, in Bata currently. And Infosys continues to do well. Among uh, the smaller companies, uh, there is Mindtree, which has managed to inch up significantly in trade. Questcorp, uh, pull up Questcorp, which has managed to surge 6% in trade. So traction clearly seen. Let's uh, take some of the counters. Uh, 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 Manav, uh, what about Bata? What do you see on the charts? See, in fact, uh, you know, the stock after a good short term consolidation, you know, its size has managed to see a good breakout uh, today on the upside. And most importantly, uh, you know, when the markets were actually breaking on the lower side, the stock actually held its important key support levels. And today, the breakout has also accompanied by above uh, 20 day average volume. So, which definitely indicates that there is a very strong momentum into uh, Bata. And also, with the new high and above average volumes, uh, you know, we expect this momentum to uh, go higher on the upside. Uh, at the current levels, definitely one should maintain a buy into this, keep a stop of four, uh, 854 on the downside and can uh, possibly expect the levels of 875 to 890. Okay, that's uh, Bata for you. That's almost a day's high with gains of 4%. Um, Sajid Shah on YouTube wanted a view on LT Foods at current market price of 60. Sajid, I can only provide you a technical view and I'll go across to Sarvendra for this one. Sarvendra on the charts, um, any position that can be taken around the current levels uh, on LT Foods? I think uh, I would uh, I would say that best avoided right now with the, with the kind of weakness that is there in the market. I think uh, these are low traded, slightly liquid names. So uh, I would say best to avoid right now. What about Britannia, Sarvendra? Uh, Britannia, I would say that uh, incrementally maybe 100, 200 points on the upside possible. But uh, uh, Britannia is in those in that list of outperformance and the way it is kind of pursed. Uh, reminds me of pharma was what pharma was doing the entire FMCG pack reminds me of what pharma was doing in 2015 and when we told people to start start booking profits and getting out of that space nobody listened and uh, see what happened to pharma I think the same will happen to FMCG may take three six months but everything is going down minimum 30 to 40 percent from wherever it tops out so Britannia another 200 points possible but after that uh, a sharp sharp correction because it's not taken a correction in the last 10 years so somewhere it has to take that and it will take that. Okay, Dr. Eddies has moved to the lowest point of the day. The, the delay in Suboxone launch uh, that would happen uh, is clearly playing out on the counter. Manav, any views on Dr. Eddies? Uh, is there more potential downside for the counter? Uh, see, the kind of a momentum that we've seen into the pharma index, uh, particularly this month, and, you know, uh, the rally specifically, Dr. Reddy, which has witnessed, uh, I think it is a time that one can start taking a bit of contra view for uh, pharma space and, and also for Dr. Reddy. 
uh, going forward. On the lower side, I think this opportunity should be taken to initiate fresh longs in case if you know you get stocks at good retracement levels and good margin of safety. On the lower side, 2200 is an important uh, support to look out for. So in case if you get Dr. Eddy's close to that support area, I think it's time to uh, one can look to uh, initiate long positions. A stock for this can be placed at 2140 on the lower side and possibly this can be traded uh, with, a, uh, with, with a view for at least one uh, for, for one month or at least for a quarter. Okay, that's Dr. Reddy's for you at day's low and just 10 minutes to go for markets to close. So let's get you some closing strategies from our experts. Sarvindra, I'll come to you first. Any uh, closing strategy that you have for our viewers? Uh, I would uh, say that uh, the way Tata Motors is closing today, I would want to play a small little bounce also somewhere. So I think Tata Motors is definitely in the list which has a stock being beaten out of shape. Uh, very oversold. Uh, I, I would suggest that uh, uh, this on the next trading day it could bounce say around 8 to 10 rupees. So right now at around 269, I would say I would buy it for a target of around uh, 278, 279 uh, for Monday's trade and I would keep a stop loss uh, below 264. Okay, some other counters which are buzzing in trade. Uh, Infosys again has inched up trading at the highest point of the day, 1315. It's up 2%. So really strong buying that's happening on really high volumes on Infosys. The other counter which has managed to inch up currently is uh, Pidilite. Pidilite is up 3%. Godrej Industries is up almost 5% in trade. Uh, let's ask a guest on uh, Pidilite and Godrej Industries. Uh, Manava, any view on Pidilite? See, Pedalite, in fact, you know, uh, is showing definitely good uh, risk reward ratio by the current levels. The stock recently, after topping out close to the levels of 1200, declined towards the levels of 1020. So it has already declined by over 7 to 8 percent. And, you know, it has taken support near its uh, short term averages and with the short term consolidation on the daily charts and with the breakout today, I sense, you know, one can definitely take a short term view for at least three to four trading sessions for a trade on the upside. Uh, at the current levels, the stock can be placed close to the levels of 1045 and can expect levels of 1110. Uh, Gotrej Industries on the other side, you know, um, has uh, observed a very good uh, sideways consolidation and a breakout today. You know, such breakouts usually leads to a good momentum play on the upside. Uh, but uh, keeping a risk reward ratio in play, I, I sense one should definitely wait for a pullback uh, into this case for any fresh entry. 620 is an important support is where one can look to initiate at the lower side and eventually I sense you know the stock has a potential to even rally on the upside and test its all-time high so keeping a good positional view on the upside 680 could be uh, the upside target that one can definitely look in for. Hmm. Manav what about your closing strategy? Uh, at the current levels uh, for BTST trade Tata Steel definitely is something that I, I would like to recommend. Uh, the stock has uh, kind of formed a double bottom pattern on the daily daily charts and the, the kind of a formation it has confirmed today it definitely indicates uh, some more further rallies on the upside. Uh, 560 would be the stop on the lower side for an upside target of 590. Is there any view on these two counters? It's a query that's come in on YouTube. Uh, Bharat Electronics and NBCC, both of them are trading rear record lows. Uh, is there more potential downside or have they bottomed out? That's for me? Yes, that's for you, Sir Vintra. Uh, see, I, as a disclaimer, I would now say that BEL is something that we are recommending and we have been recommending it now for the long term uh, because whatever base case scenario will, uh, has been met here. So the stock has corrected uh, more than 50, almost 50% 50 from, uh, from, the, from the highs that it printed. So it has fulfilled our criteria where we were expecting 40-50% corrections. And this being a good stock and overall uh, the longer term uh, setups or the longer term counts that we take, Elliott wave counts, I think those are, those are still encouraging. The stock has decently retraced. Anybody wanting to look at BL has to look at uh, with a 12 month plus kind of horizon. And in the meantime, also be ready to for some pain because if the market corrects a little bit, then the stock could correct 10, 15, 20 points more. But now we are saying here is that uh, eventually when the stock pulls back, uh, the stock could actually end up at around 160, 170 into a pullback. And once uh, the upsides are def uh, decisively in place with a break above 170, the stock would challenge its all-time highs at 200 plus. So the stock looks good. The horizon has to be minimum 12 month plus. Uh, you have to be ready for a pain till 80. And uh, best case, I think uh, this should be 160, 170. Uh, a minimum, bare minimum case. And best case, 
a slightly longer term it could actually be a 200 rupee plus stock but it will test your patience and it will take time yeah. closing strategy sarvendra what do you what are you spotting uh, i had uh, i had recommended one already which is uh, which is tata motors i would i would uh, if i have to put a sell trade as well i would say uh, in this bounce i would like to sell something like a something like a asian paints uh, which on which we already shared a call but i think asian paints i would still say i would want to sell it for uh, for it for for monday and if someone is selling it only for a monday stbt type kind of trade then 1240 is the target and not 1200 1240 is the target and uh, in that case you are putting a stop loss at 1275 Well, 40 on the sell side is the target that uh, Sarvendra is giving on Asian Paints till Monday. Uh, can we pull up the chart of Gujarat Gas? I guess there's a sudden crash that has been seen for that stock. It's down nearly six to seven percent in trade right now. Five percent. It's recovered a bit. I think it was down some six to seven percent. Any thoughts on this one, Manav? On the charts, Gujarat Gas are now at 722 after falling five percent. Actually, the stock has been continuously witnessed a series of decline from its recent peak of 900, and most importantly, you know, the stock also observed a breakdown from its monthly chart support levels of of eight of uh, 750. So, I sense you know this stock has entered into a uh, uh, intermediate bear zone, and uh, uh, you could uh, eventually witness a series of lower tops and bottoms going forward. So, the, on a very short term perspective, there there will be series of resistance at 750 on the upside. So, any pullback. Uh, is uh, an opportunity to, to exit into the stock, and eventually, you know, the stock could also see a series of decline, uh, you know, uh, on the lower side. So I think uh, 650 could be also the target for a medium-term perspective. Okay, 650 on the downside could be the target. So the charts of Gujarat Gas, remember, are looking weak, and the stock just fell in the last 10 to 15 minutes of trade. Um, Sarvendra, on day one of the new series, we are finding support from something like LNT, which had fallen 11 to 12 percent in the June series. Has it bottomed out? Can one look to take any position on this one, or there can be further pain? It's just a dead cat bounce. See, I think for uh, Larsen, I think the setups are very, very fresh. So. just four days back uh, with some decent volumes it broke below the long term 200 day averages and today over the last two days it's wanting to pull back and test that number uh, for the kind of lo- lengthy long range bar that we have put today i am not excited with the volume so if it were, uh, we are assuming here that the 200 day was a broken uh, the, the break was a whipsaw so we are classify if the break was a whipsaw then this pullback has to be sharper and with good volumes so that it is not qualifying till now so i would say that yes this can just be a bounce but uh, larson is not done in over with and there could definitely be more downsides left the only caveat here remains that now if at all there has to be any semblance of bullishness creeping back the stock has to regain 1320 1330 levels and once it does that then yes then then probably we can say that the break of the long term averages was a, was was a false break and the lows have been printed at around 1200 so even if you buy at 1330 Uh, with a stop below 1200 and could keep a target of 15 1600 i think the risk rewards will still be there but right now very very fresh setups neither a buy convincing neither a sell i think it is a right. wait and watch and probably a, sure. a, a trade next week okay that's the technical view on lnt but just a minute and a half to go for markets to close let's head across to dashan mehta to find out how exactly today's closing is panning out and dashan what a great start to the july series out call it we're closing above the 10700 mark Yes, we are. Yes, we, we are. We, we are, and we are pretty much closing near the highest point of the day. The Nifty is up almost 120 points. The Sensex is up almost 400 points. But what look what's not doing well? It's the Nifty Bank. It's the, it's up only 23 points. It was up almost 150 points at one point of time. Has managed to cool off, given the fact that the public sector banks have not been performing, and so has HDFC Bank has given up most of the gains. What's doing well is the mid cap. The mid cap is up almost 1.9 percent. Really flatly currently coming in as far as the small cap is concerned. The small cap is up almost. Almost three percent, and the BSE mid cap is up almost one point eight percent. So clear amount of strong traction that's been seen. Uh, let's pull up and go to some of the stocks that uh, are in focus. Let's take a look at which are the stocks. So, so Gale is up almost six uh, percent in trade currently. It's among the top Nifty gainers. Titan continues to do extremely well in trade. Titan has moved up post a weak opening. The metal pack is doing well. Hindalco, Tata Steel, both of them closing at the day's high. Ahead of the auto sales number, Bajaj Auto has contributed. 
and LNT and Reliance are contributing. So all the heavyweights are contributing in today's trade. What is not doing well? Very, very few stocks. The big one being Dr. Reddy's. And it is down on news, not on selling flow. It's mainly down because of the Kaboxone. Uh, Suboxone launched, which got delayed. Tech Mahindra has been rather weak for the past few days. It's down almost 7 to 8% in the past few trading sessions. Indusind Bank uh, is weak in trade. Hero ahead of the auto sales number is looking weak. And this is the reason why the bank nifty is also down. HDFC Bank is not contributing. It's down almost 1%, pretty much closing at day's lows. The Bajaj Twins are also not contributing in a trade currently. So that's the setup. Overall, majority of the stocks are contributing. But it's an extremely strong start, stop, uh, start uh, to the new series that we've seen, Navneet. Well, that's right, Darshan, and some respite coming in for the broader markets, at least today, which have been reeling under pressure. So I'm just going to highlight few stocks. Uh, Colte Patel was quite active today, so that one saw gains of nearly 17 to 18%. And finally, actually, it's closed at upper circuit, gains of 20%. Good going for this one. The hotel stocks went up in the last hour of trade, so something like Oriental Hotel and also Royal Orchid. Both of them saw good amount of strength, 18% gains for uh, Oriental. Royal Orchid also closing around the day high mark of uh, gains of 10%. Container Corp, one of the FNO stocks also did well. So this one also saw some buying momentum, 6.2% hour for this one. Petronet LNG was up and about in today's session and the consumption theme that we've been talking about, we did see HUL ITC going up. So you had Imami from uh, you know the mid caps uh, side of the FMCG pack, that saw gains of 5.5%. NMDC, Jindal Steel and Power, Metals pack was up today. Nifty Metals Index was your top sectoral gainers, 4.5% for NMDC, JSPL also up at least 6 to 6.5%. Six Let me highlight a couple of losers then. Oracle Financial, that was quite weak in today's trade. Uh, uh, that's the intraday chart. And throughout the session, actually, it's been trading in the weak territory, down 2%. Dilip Bilcon continues to be locked in lower circuit today. I think it was down for the eighth straight session. Gujarat Gas uh, tumbled in last hour of trade or last half an hour or something. It recovered from the day's low, but still closing with cuts of 4%. And Jain Irrigation, first day of the news, series once again saw fresh short positions coming in for this one with cuts of almost 3% Darshan. Yeah, so let's uh, first pull up uh, to see how the Nifty has closed. Uh what are the contributors, what the Nifty has done through this year. First of all, the Nifty pretty much ended at the highest point of the day. So extremely strong close. Uh, it didn't manage. It, it actually moved up gradually throughout the day, uh, indicating that there was no sudden sell-off that happened. Pull up the Nifty Bank and there, there was this big blip that happened in, in, in the afternoon trade. And the Nifty Bank that corrected significantly, uh, not closing at the highest point of the day. So the, so the close of the Nifty Bank is not very strong in trade. Let's pull up the contributors, what happened with the nifty and we'll come to know exactly who contributed how much the nifty was up 125 points reliance hdfc lnt itc the heavyweights have been contributing but not is not doing well is hdfc bank hdfc bank has reversed the gain it is it had so almost uh, contributed 12 points on the lower side obviously indusind bank mnm dr eddies also not contributing so uh, it, it, let's see even if we can pull out some uh, ch charts that indicate how we've panned for the first six months of the year and uh, we'll come to know what exactly has happened as far as the market is concerned now if you're taking a look at what's happened on the nifty itself it's basically uh, you know it companies and some of the private sector banks that have done well tcs is up when the nifty itself is up 1.7 percent in on the ytd basis TCS is up 37%, Kotak is up 33%, Bajaj Finance is up 30%, Infosys, Tech Mahindra, HUL, all the high beta counters, all the high value stock have moved and now need to look at the counters which are low valued and not performing. You have your Tata Motors, HPCL, Vedanta. Bharat Petroleum, 40, yeah. 30 to 40% down. The in oil and trade. gas stocks, Darshan, have been under pressure because of rising crude, uh, higher crude prices. So uh, clearly, I think the, the index have been maintained by select financials and also the ID pack. I think the picture is going to look the opposite if you could just pull up the Nifty 500 and YTD basis because there was a huge correction that one has seen for the broader yeah. market indices for you know 2018 till now, where Nifty is still sitting with gains of a percent and a half. There's been a sharp correction that one has seen for mid 
mid cap, yeah. small cap, but also the Nifty 500 index. So that's the one for you. Uh, look at the losses first, and these are your all usual suspects. Vakrangi eroded wealth of nearly 85%, Bombay dying 80%, quality, JBF Industries, Reliance, Naval and Eng uh, Engineering, PC Jewelers, that's the other one which has been in focus for this year, and uh, Jay Prakash uh, Power, Hindustan Construction, all of them, and Manpas and Beverages also, not to forget that one, how uh, shareholder wealth and all these stocks have been eroded. And on the gaining side, a couple of gainers, Merck uh, was up 84%, so India was ventured did pretty well in the first half of this year for so solutions so here also uh, Darshan if you see these are all IT stocks for source and IT mind tree KPIT technology so I think the support emphasis has come in majorly L &D from, uh, yeah, on the IT side. yeah so majorly it's the IT pack which has given support so far in the first half of this financial year um, I want to pull up uh, the turnover and let's see how that panned out because participation usually on day one is on the lower side so it is on the lower side definitely the cash turnover as compared to yesterday was 37 Today it's 29,000 and NSE FNO, as expected, it's below the average turnover of nearly five to five and a half lakh crore. Well, on that note, let's get going and get you some closing thoughts from our technical experts. Sarveen, I'm going to come to you first. How would you approach trade on Monday morning? Oh, I, I think uh, today is a hectic day. Tomorrow is also a hectic day for us because <clears throat> we have monthly and quarterly closes to look at now. So we'll be looking at and going through our data, looking at the bow copy and uh, getting a strategy set, not why, why for only for Monday we will be fixing out our strategy for the next month, one quarter, because what you, how you have closed for the month and quarter on candlesticks uh, gives you a flavor of what to expect uh, into the next bar or two bars. So in that sense, I think the work begins today once the bow copy comes and uh, I think we will have a much clearer view next week. Uh, we are carrying a very clear, week, uh, clear view right now and our view is on the downside. But to pick stocks and what trades to do, I think uh, today's bow copy is very, very important. Both monthly and quarterly closes happening today, it should be very, very important. So next week, I will have a better update. Manu, what about you? What would your approach be, considering we've closed above the mark of 10,700, which is a day's high? Yes, uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, most importantly, uh, the close, weekly close above 10,700 would is, is going to be slightly positive, you know, uh, that is one thing that I started with. Um, and uh, last week's low was also 10,700. So we have successfully defended uh, closing bases, you know, 10,700. I think uh, the kind of a, a sell-off that we observed in last couple of trading sessions and uh, a, a complete uh, pullback uh, or you can say a reverse positions and, you know, closing above 10,700, definitely some sort of a bear trap has taken place. Uh, in case of Nifty manages and exceeds the levels of 10,030 uh, going Monday, I think that is the time to go long. And uh, definitely, if somebody goes long, a stop of 10,680 would can be placed, and eventually you can expect a retest uh, of the levels of 10,800. So I think, uh, on the broader sense, as long as uh, Nifty holds on 10,680 on closing basis, I think one can still uh, maintain a slight positive bias, but a stop loss is definitely recommended. Okay, we leave it at that, gentlemen. Manav as well as Sarvendra, thank you so much uh, for joining us on uh, Bloomberg Quint. But as we round up, uh, the goods and services tax was rolled out on 1st July 2017. A year on the option, a year on the opinion is largely divided. What also changed is the very structure under which the goods are transported across the country. The e-way bill, which was rolled out from the 1st of April this year, has prompted transporters to adopt to a new system. Paswini Upadhyay did a ground check with three such transport operators based in Mumbai. And here's how their experience has been so far.